Muy buenas tardes, Joko Fossi, el gran canadiano peregrino. Muchísimas, muchísimas gracias, en serio, por volvermos otra vez a, a dudar sobre algo tan importante en nuestras vidas como es el Camino de Santiago. Muchísimas gracias, en serio. Y no, quiero nada, mucho... hombre, es, es un placer para mí. Yo, como, como tú, somos uh, adictos del camino. Entonces, hablar del camino es un placer siempre. Un placer, siempre, siempre. Pues, loco, uh, cuéntanos un poco cómo, cómo empezó tu historia con el camino. ¿Cómo fuiste tú llamado al camino? Eh, la primera vez fue en eh, 2002. Eh, yo eh, era un comerciante y estaba viajando con eh, mi jefe y mi amigo y él eh, murió de un crisis cardíaca. Y eh, cuando nosotros estamos en uh, Bélgica. Y uh, para mí fue un momento de una pena muy grande, una pena uh, física, una pena psicológica, uh, una pena espiritual. Y entonces yo buscaba algo para pensar qué hacer después, porque la vida que yo uh, estaba viviendo uh, no me gustaba mucho. Y yo uh, leí un artículo en un uh, periódico canadiense y uh, fue de un uh, peregrino Uh, y yo uh, llamé a este uh, escritor y hablamos y después, una semana después, yo estuve en un avión hasta Pamplona y la primera, primera vez uh, el camino francés desde Pamplona hasta Santiago y después uh, a Finisterre y Muxia también. ¿Te acuerdas cómo fue esta semana en que hablas con el escritor y una semana después estás en el camino? ¿Te acuerdas cómo fue eso? ¿Cuál fue, o sea, cuando has, has leído el, el, el artículo, cuál fue la, la primera impresión que, que has tenido? ¿Cuál fue el primer impacto que has tenido sobre el camino de Santiago? Fue el impacto, la llamada fue de un sitio una experiencia donde uno puede pensar. Porque en la vida de cada día, la vida día a día, nosotros estamos siempre, siempre llamadas, reuniones, cosas a hacer. Eh, la cosa que fue muy frapante, muy mucho impacto del artículo. Fue la idea de silencio, la idea de un tiempo solo para mí, solo para pensar. Entonces fue un olor, <ríe> un olor como, como un caballo al final del día buscando agua. <ríe> Para mí el camino es así. ¿Y cuando, y cuando llegas a, a Pamplona, esa ciudad es tan importante, en el Stanley cogiendo sí. los toros, ¿cuál fue la, la primera impresión desde tu primer día cuando ya empiezas a caminar en una altura tan distinta como la, la que vivimos ahora? Y no, hablo, y no hablo de la pandemia, hablo de, de los años sí. que vivimos como desde San 9, 18, um, en un camino en 2002, que todavía el camino era muy poco conocido. ¿Cuál fue tu primera impresión? Yo llegué uh, en Pamplona pocos días antes de los San Fermines. Entonces, un montón de gente. 
en todas partes. Tú sabes, durante los San Fermines, una ciudad de 200 mil personas, uh, ahora tiene un millón de personas. Y la gente durmiendo en los parques uh, es, es un... Uh, un mundo. Un, un, otro mundo. Y yo, dentro de toda la gente, me, sentío, me sentía tan solo. Pero el momento que yo, después de Pamplona, estaba todo solo, yo me sentía completo. No, no, no puedo decir en inglés, I was not alone in the crowd in Pamplona, but I was lonely. And yeah. the moment I was alone on the path, I was no longer lonely. And déjame, it's, it's an incredible difference. Let me, déjame sí. uh, uh, leerte una que, que es quizás la, la, la frase o la expresión de mi camino. Y luego la, la traduzco también a, a, al inglés. Qué bien. Uh, y, es, y, y va mucho en cuenta a, a lo que dices, ¿sabes? Um, quieres estar solo y no estar solo. Uh, con un minuto, un minuto que la encuentro ya. Aquí. Ah, no, esta no. Esta. El camino es como nuestra pro propia vida. Debes dejar que te sorprenda a cada paso. El camino se debe hacer desde la soledad de cada uno y en compañía de todo el mundo. Uh -huh. Eso, esto me encanta, ¿sabes? Porque sí. translated it, uh, I don't know, I'm not, but, uh, estamos solos muchas veces queremos estar solos, sí. pero nunca estamos solos. Es verdad, hombre. Nunca estamos uh, solos porque al fin de todos los días estamos con otros peregrinos y yo ya trece veces he, he hecho uh, caminos y cada vez uh, encontré una familia de camino. Uh, camino family, cada vez. Camino family. Y, oh, y mis, mis, mis amigos muy cerca, y son más que amigos, son, son familia. Familia, son familia. Uh, es, es, es increíble. Yo realmente puedo decir, yo estoy recién llegado del camino, recién llegado como hace un mes. Y he hecho sí. un camino, fue el camino más largo que he hecho. Fueron dos en uno. Fue el Camino San Salvador más el Camino sí. Primitivo. Y ah. fue una experiencia inolvidable, inigualable. Y lo que pasa es que he hecho el camino mucho a lo mío. ¿Me entiendes? Uh -huh. O sea, mucho por mí, pero no por mí. Lo estaba haciendo a nombre de otra persona a quien le dediqué este camino, que es un gran amigo mío que está muy enfermo. Um, pero esto para, para decirte que quizás a lo hacer por mí y por este mi amigo y a lo hacerlo a lo mío a estar por mi cuenta los peregrinos con quien no me relacioné fueron personas extraordinarias sí. fueron un, uno aquí y otro allá pero estos peregrinos me dejaron en, en cada su manera mucha huella en mi camino me aportaron muchísimo y seguirán aportando porque somos grandes, grandes amigos después de un camino maravilloso que he hecho. Fueron pocos, fueron pocos, pero los pocos que, que fueron, fueron muchísimo buenos. Sí. Y en este camino me han pasado cosas uh, inesquecibles. Fue increíble. Déjame con, contarte una para introducir ya el próximo tema, ¿vale? Vale. Uh, un minuto. Sí, ya. Yeah. Um, 
En mi primer camino. No, en mi primer camino no joder. En el primer día. De, el, el día cero. Vamos a empezar el día que le va de hoy. Me quedé en el albergue de las Carvalajas. Carva, Carvalajas. Car, Carvajadas. Carvajadas. Esa va a ver el de las, de las mojas carvajadas. Prim, primera etapa después de León o en León. En León mismo. En León. León. Ah, día cero. Sí. Día cero. Sí. Um, Con las mojas en uh, León. Sí. Y en ese albergue, el primer peregrino continuado, quitando los hospitaleros, pero el primer peregrino que continuado que vale, me reconoce por un simple detalle. Ahora no lo tengo aquí. Ahora no lo tengo aquí, pero yo tengo una, una manita que significa la manita de la amistad en el camino que es la manita de mucho. Y la, la he visto y me, y me preguntó, ¿dónde, ¿dónde coges la manita? Es de mucho, de mi amigo, que era este, este peregrino, eres mucho amigo de la persona que, la, que las hace. Wow. Entonces empezamos a hablar, empezamos a hablar. Y justamente se iba también al camino de San Salvador. Justo esto por la mañana, al, al empezar el primer día, salimos juntos. Para que no nos perdiéramos con el lío que ha salido de León. Después ya de una vez que, nos, que encontramos el camino, ya tiramos cada uno a su ritmo. Yo llegué temprano, yo llegué un poco más tarde. Y cuando llegó estaba muy enfermo. Tenía un problema con las espaldas. Y la verdad es que no pudo continuar a caminar. Pero... Como ya tenía todas las reservas hechas uh, y como tenía su coche en León, en la jobla, que es el final de, de la primera etapa, cogió por la mañana, la día siguiente, cogió un autobús, se acercó a León y he venido estando haciendo turismo, no camino, pero turismo, por, por el camino a San Salvador y conociendo. Y siempre coincidíamos porque estaba en los mismos pueblos. Y en el cuarto día, hay, hay una iglesia. ¿no? ¿Lo hiciste alguna vez, El Salvador? No, ya no, pero eh, me gustaría muchísimo hacerlo. Pues hay una iglesia muy emblemática de ese camino, que es la iglesia de Santa Cristina de Edén. Lo que pasa, yo pasé ahí muy temprano, sobre las nueve de la mañana, y todavía estaba cegada. Y yo entonces seguí caminando. Y me quedé muy triste por no poder ver por dentro, porque dicen mucha gente, muchos amigos, dicen que la iglesia más bonita de todos los caminos. Una iglesia del siglo VIII, imagínate. Y es una pasada. Y en esa iglesia, yo pasé a las nueve de la mañana. Entonces yo seguí caminando. Y por la tarde me encuentro con él y le comenté. Uh, ¿Qué tal? José mi José mi se, se llamaba José mi de Valencia. Y yo, ¿qué tal, José? ¿Es, es, es visto la esta iglesia prerromana de, de Santa Cristina de Elena? Y yo, ¿qué iglesia es esa? Mira, es una iglesia prerromana del siglo VIII que dicen que es la más bella del camino. Y, y creo yo, según de medicina, o según he visto en un papel que estaba en la, en la puerta de la iglesia, que solo abre entre las 4 y las 6 de la tarde. Todos los días, pero entre las 4 y las 6 de la tarde. Yo pasé ya a las 9. Mi idea era que cuando yo llegase a Oviedo, antes de empezar, yo ya conozco más o menos a Oviedo, entonces por la tarde cogí un autobús hasta Pueblo de Elena y iba a visitar la... Wow. Y José Mí, como tenía, como tenía su coche, me ha llevado, imagina. Y esto era un 5 en cuarto. Y llegamos a las 6 menos 10, 10 minutos antes de cerrar. Y esto ha sido un detalle tan, tan bonito para conmigo que fue. Hoy, hoy somos muy amigos. Hubo más detalles, pero ese me quedó aquí adentro. Está aquí adentro. Ha sido muy especial, ¿sabes? Y la iglesia sí. es cualquier cosa. 
Es increíble. No, dicen que uh, hay uh, muchos ángeles del camino uh, y uh, la gente que... ¿Tú crees? ¿Y tú crees? ¿Tú los, los has encontrado? Yo sí. Yo he encontrado muchos sí. ángeles. Sí. Entonces, sí, seguramente. 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 Yo, yo uh, muchas veces estaba... Uh, um, estaba uh, el, uh, uh, de, de, hacer de, un, un uh, choice. Yeah, to do, you know, lots of times when I I was making a choice of going right or left because I'd lost the signs, uh, and and each of those times, uh, someone would appear. It just just incredibly um, and say, no, 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 it's that way, not this way. Uh, almost always an older woman, almost always uh, felt the spirit of my grandmother watching over me uh, and making sure that uh, I continued along the way. For me, it's like an old guy, like 75 years old, 80, old dressed in black. Yeah. I don't know why, but I have some. I, I have one friend of mine, a Spanish, a Spanish friend, and it was really special because he told me that he and his wife they saw this black, this old man with all dressed up black. So right. it's not just like it's not like me just thinking and uh, feeling that. No. And um, I don't know, it's so special. And about Very this, uh, my fourth Camino, first time on the Primitivo. Um, on the last day, on the last kilometers before reaching Santiago, I lost my Pilgrim passport. I had two because one was already fulfilled, and I bought another one in Lugo. And the last time that I stamped the credential, but the bigger passport was on Monte de Gozo. Was the last time. Then we arrived in Santiago. It was like so emotional that that uh, that that arrival. Because two things, of course, our our journey of arriving, and because in that Camino, my Camino family, we were four, but we arrived just three, uh, because when had to go back earlier, but is also part of our Camino family. But we were like three, me and a middle-aged guy from uh, Sevilla and one uh, um, young woman from Badajoz, from Extremadura. Um, and this girl was suffering a lot, all since the day one, where we first met. And I guess, That I and uh, Rafael, uh, we kind of have like this uh, mission to get to this girl to arrive uh, in Santiago, and she did. And it was so, so special. But okay. Ah. In that moment, I was searching for my bag for, for my pilgrim passport just to take a picture. And that's when I realized that I that I lost it at least once. And um, I didn't get like really nervous. I was calmed down because I kind of had already passed by something similar in the past. Yeah. And um, I was, okay. So we went to get our, our number to, to get the Compasella. It was like, it took like three hours to get to our number. And so we went to the Alberg, we take a shower. And then the Alberg, I asked to the, to the hospitaleros if he can drive me to the, um, to the Monte de Rosso and see if I left uh, the, my bigger best part there. So I went there, it wasn't there, I searched around, it wasn't there. And someone from the, um, the Christian community on the Monte de Rosso, they, they told me. So 
call the, the pilgrim's office and see if uh, it's it's uh, someone or some pilgrim left it there. Uh, so I call it and no one, there's nothing. So anyway, they regarded me the Compostela and I was okay. But uh, I was like this little bug inside my head. I was sad about losing, losing, losing. Um, we all know it's it's one of our most treasured souvenirs. Yeah, and of uh, Caminos. And so next day, uh, I met uh, I met I um, with two more pilgrims because uh, Rafael went and followed to Finisterra. And the girl went home. So in the next day at min at uh, at noon, I was I was by myself, and I met like two more pilgrims, and we we uh, were acquaintances because we saw each other on, on the primitivo, and it was like old guys, really tall guys, skinny and tall. But they told me and they 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 asked me for for my help. Um, First to how to get the Compostela and then uh, to go to further the, the, the pilgrim's mess. So I can have my afternoon clear. So I, I helped them, of course. Um, and I went back again to the pilgrim's office to help them. And once once I was there, I, I, I asked again. And so no one could uh, answer me. And the answer was always no. Okay. I guess that was when I really, really dropped out of. But anyway, next day, I, I, I stayed two, two days in Santiago, two nights in Santiago. Let's stay in the morning. Um, I was getting the bus to go back home in the afternoon. In the morning, I'm taking my breakfast on some really, really uh, near to the cathedral. And somehow in my head, I decided to go one last time to the cathedral just to say my prayers to St. James and to give me to give him uh, a last hug. So yeah, I was there, I was praying a bit, and then I went to the line to, to get uh, to give the to the to, to, to the apostle. And in the line I met like this Portuguese group of pilgrims, their first Camino, and they had something uh, that really uh, get my attention. So part of them, they were like these t-shirts. It was in, in one side was the name of the place where they live. Mm -hmm. And the other, the other side, it's something um, confraternity of Our Lady of Grace. And for you to understand, um, the main uh, lady of my pueblo, of my of my little town, is exactly Our Lady of Grace. Yes. So and it's your so, patron Madonna. Yeah. So we kind of talked about it, and once again, they asked for my help. Uh, so once again, I went back to the pilgrim's office with this Portuguese group. And for some reason, I was talking to one of them uh, and she, he was called, I, I went there, I, I, I go I go in. Um, and they were like, like this big tall guy from the order of Malta. Um, and he asked me, what, uh, what are you doing here? Uh, I no, because you have no credential, you have no period of passport. What are you doing here? So I don't know. By any chance, I asked. So I lost my my period of passport. Did you know if someone left it here or I found it or you know? So th this guy didn't know anything. But anyway, he went and asked for another person, and this other person, it actually was the, the guy. There was like in this queue. You know, yeah. and uh, this guy, he, he told me that someone told that uh, someone delivered a Bureau passport uh, on the on the on the 
police precinct in Santiago, the local police in Santiago, they're like 100 meters from the building's office. So the first time that I, is, I, I start running into the, 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 the local police, and yeah, it was my career. It was my career. Oh, wow. Qué fuerte, hombre. Qué fuerte. Pues nada, de esta manera ya puedes entender cómo soy tan adicto al camino, ¿no? Sí. Oye, si tu camino uh, pudiera tener una, una expresión, ¿cuál sería? En inglés, en uh, inglés, hay uh, Psalm 46 que um, dice be still and know that I am God. And uh, it's that stillness that comes into your mind when you're walking the Camino that for me is so powerful. That's amazing. Thank you for, for, for sharing that. Yeah. So, um, one of the things, um, there are all kinds of, of like this uh, uh, range of things that makes the, the Camino so special for so many people. One of them is the people that you met. Is yes. the, the people, the, the, the locals. Um, and for me, it's really, really important to get to know the culture, the local culture, to talk to, to, the, to the old person of the village. I don't know. I really, really love this moment. And not this year, uh, I did not, Yeah, I kind of did. Yeah, I kind of did. But okay, this year arriving in um, arriving in Dino. Yeah, in Dino, I was there was like this old guy walking, but she was in his uh, daily walk, and. I catch this 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 local guy, this old local guy. And we walked together, I don't know, five kilometers, I guess, more or less. And it was so good talking to that old guy. So, like, I really, really cherish that that, that moment. Um, and moments like that, it was just one that came up to my head. Um, uh, but the, the question is, What was the, um, how you feel about the friendship that is uh, um, present on the Camino? Oh, it's, um, it's tremendous and it's deep. I mean, you know, we, we think of our friends, our, our day-to-day uh, friends, and maybe Maybe we see them once a month or once every couple of weeks, we go out to dinner and we have various small talk and then maybe get to serious issues. On, on the Camino, depending on how long you're, you're, you're staying uh, and you're going, and my longest one, I, I spent a month, you could be seeing people over the period of a month and each of the conversations um, are deep and broad and talking about important things. So in that one month, you get to know someone in a way that would take you decades. Uh, and so that is, that is very, uh, very, very powerful. And um, as I said, I've had the good fortune of being able to, to walk 13 Caminos and Each one of them, uh, you know, by far one of the great highlights is the Camino family um, that that you discover that you have, um, you know, brothers and sisters of another mother, if you will. And uh, those are people that I've kept in touch with, you know, for the last 20 years. That's really, really amazing. I don't know. Uh, I've kind of understand that I don't know if I'm putting this uh, in the right words, but we on the Camino, we are naked. So 
it doesn't matter if you are like a CEO of a big company or that I am a blue collar worker. On the Camino, we are the same. And it's so easy to connect. It's, yeah. I can pay you a beer. You can pay me a beer. If I want, I can pay you like, I can offer you a bottle of wine. You can offer the same, you know, there's no differences. Right. In Titles case. don't matter. Clothes don't matter. Nothing, you nothing. Know, you're stripped down to the basics. And as one of my friends says, you get to be your best you. Definitely. Right? definitely. You, get to, you. you get to be the essence of you. And, and clearly, people who choose to do the Camino, uh, by and large, you're already in a self-selected community, right? right? There are already people who've heard a call, who, who see it. Yes, there are some who... There are some who see it just as a cheap holiday. And, and uh, I'm sure in your many Caminos, you've always heard the debate, you know, who's, who's a peregrino and who's a turegrino, right? Who's a let tourist? Me, and who's a sorry to you. Let me tell you a story. You may not know this, but actually today was my first day back on being an hospitalator after almost two years. It was today. Wow. And there was like this Portuguese guy, girl that was like kind of challenge to me because uh, she was on her second or third day of walking. And she was kind of mad at it, I guess, uh, but she wants to continue. Um, but the thing that I was trying to tell her is that, and this is true, I don't know no one, no one, and even you, you are the perfect, the perfect example for the, 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 the example that I will give to you. I don't know no one that just made just one Camino. It's important. Maybe there is some somewhere in the world, but I don't know. And uh, I have, you are from Canada, from Canada. I have a really, really three really good friends, two more from California, but they are my acquaintances, but mainly from Seattle. And I met them on the Portuguese Camino in 2018. Uh, we have talked almost uh, two months, in two months more or less. And they told me they are already playing for the next Camino in 2023. It will took five years to do another Camino, but they will go back. And talking to this girl, I was uh, trying to explain this. Uh, you met, and no, no, wow, this will be my last and first time. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, don't say never. Don't say never. It's the, that was the last thing that, uh, that, was, that I, I, I told them. Don't say never. <laughs> but then, it happened, it happened something really special again to me. And uh, so on your work, um, I, I, I had like six pilgrims from Spain. They were a group of middle age, like 60s, between 54 and 68. But they were friends, they were from the, the same town. And uh, we really have yeah, connect, but in a regular basis, nothing too much, nothing too too low. And after five, six in the afternoon, I had a little time to relax and to stop and to drink a beer. So I went to the bar and decided, like, besides to the Albury, and I asked for a beer, and they invited me. They invited me and. We start to talk about it, and at some point there was uh, a food conversation about Spanish food. And uh, and let me talk Spanish in this part. El plato que más me gusta en España y que yo puedo comer todos los días es la tortilla. Y estuvimos ahí hablando sobre la tortilla. 
Y pasado unos cinco minutos, yo he tenido que volver a la verga para ver si estaba todo bien, a ver si los primeros primeros estaban algo. Y he tardado unos 15 minutos en volver. Para terminar la, la cerveza. Y volví. Estaba uno, uno de ellos, era un face, uno de ellos, pidiendo al camarero que le regalase o que le, com, o que le vendiese cuatro patatas para que pudiera hacerme una tortilla. <risa> la verdad es que hicimos la tortilla, hicimos también una ensalada de pasta y me invitaron a comer. Y comemos, tenemos dos, siete ahí. Y fue maravilloso. Eso es el camino, hombre. Es el camino. Eso es. Para... Cuéntanos, por favor, alguna anécdota que, que te acuerdes de tu camino. Um, I'll, I'll say it in English because it's a little yeah, complicated, okay, don't worry. but uh, an important story. And it's from my very first Camino. And I was uh, in the Meseta uh, in a little town called Ledigos uh, before Sahagún. Uh, and at the time, in 2002, um, it wasn't really um, a full-scale albergue. It's, it's become one since, but at the time you were living in someone's, you were staying in someone's house. And I was sharing a room with a gentleman from Belgium who was 74 years old, Pierre, uh, Peter. Um, and uh, he was on his third Camino. Uh, and he said, uh, my wife has made me promise that this will be my last Camino because she's afraid at my age, doing so many kilometers uh, will, will be bad for my health. Uh, but it was important for me to come this time because the other two times I came in my 50s and 60s, I came to ask God for something. But this time I ask only for the strength to complete the, the Camino because I've been married to the same wonderful woman for 50 years. We have eight children, 24 grandchildren. I've had a successful career in banking in Belgium. And I'm here simply to give thanks to God for all the blessings I've received in life. And to spend an evening with this gentleman was so powerful. The spirit of gratitude was enormous. And the next morning I got up early because as you know, the Meseta gets very, very hot. I was there in, in July, August. So it was super hot. So I, I like to start at five in the morning so I could be done uh, early, early uh, afternoon walking. And I wanted to be quiet and not wake up uh, Peter, but he said, look, Rocco, turn on the light. I get up. I just don't walk as far now that I'm 74, but no problem. Turn on the light, get your pack ready. He, when I was all set, he got up, he gave me a big hug. He put his hand on my forehead, gave me his blessing. And I walked outside and the sky was dark. And in the distance was lightning and it was clear there was a storm coming. And in any other circumstance, I would have gone back, put, uh, sitting in bed and cover myself with the blanket. But I felt blessed by Peter. And so I kept walking and I walked for about an hour, about five kilometers. And now I can, I can see that I'm right up against the clouds and water is... Uh, is coming down very hard and bouncing off of the hard uh, Meseta ground. And there's no shelter, there's no trees, there's no nothing. So I just put on my gear and I walk. And the first, I hit the wall of water and it rains on me for no more than 20 seconds. And then it was like the parting of the Red Sea. There was a seam in the clouds and on either side of me were sheets of water, rain coming down, but not another drop hit me. And I walked for 20 minutes and then I turned around and the clouds closed together behind me. And a rational part of my brain was saying, oh, of course, there was a seam, there was a break in the clouds, no problem. But 
the little hairs on the back of my head were, no, 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 no. You were blessed by Peter this morning. This is this is the Camino protecting you. It was, a, me, it was a beautiful moment. Beautiful. Let me tell you one of my last moments. And actually, not on the physical Camino. So, yes. Uh, because of the project that I started, Pastor Camino, um, I was invited to help uh, some pilgrims uh, fighting for for the, the Iron Cross because she's yeah. in the Philippines. And oh. well, um, our dear friend uh, Alejandro Alex Camino yeah, yeah. Uh, is doing a great we work. Are together, we are together on on that yeah. fighting for the Iron Cross and. Um, Exactly. And to be honest, uh, I I never walked until yet, but I will the, the French Camino. Yeah. I needed I needed to get at least this place. So uh, in my in one of the first days where we where the border was open, or on the first day actually, I guess. Um, I, I I pick up my car and uh, my car. I went to to Galicia. I went to meet a friend of mine from from Galicia, and we had lunch together. We enjoyed a nice meal, and we put a date. Uh, we booked a date for him to show me the Iron Cross, and that day was the three of July, a uh, three of June, of two thousand and twenty-one. So in that day, I work in an ice shift. Um, in that day, I I I left out my job at uh, six a.m. I went back. I went home. I get a shower and I get on my car, a car, and drive until until Galicia, where uh, he picked up me. Uh, he started to drive me because I was really tired. And wow. he drove me back to Ponferrada. And all the way since Ponferrada, passing Molina Seca and just climbing a hill that you have to, coming from the community, you have to go down. Yeah. Climbing, you know, the road. And it was like, um, how can I say? It was full of, full of snow, fog all the way. Fog right. all the way. Just fog, fog, fog. You can see like one or two meters uh, in front of me. Yeah. So after some hour round after San Miguel Acebo, between San Miguel Acebo and Maharim, at some point we we really get chills, me and, and my friend Daniel. And oh it's it's the song that is playing, I, I told you. And he told me said, no, no, no. It's the place where we have, where we have, where we are. Okay. And then we are a bit sad because we are like full of fog and we really don't really don't want to see the the iron cross with fog. We'll be not so well lightened and you know. And I don't know how, but at some point I said to Daniel, don't worry, we will uh, Arriving there, and the fog will dissipate, yeah. will disappear. So we arrived there at the Iron Cross. There were like fog all the way, and there were four pilgrims. They were from Switzerland and some Germans that was actually on the Iron Cross. So we waited for them to do their rituals. And the moment that we approached the Iron Cross, the fog disappeared. Wow. It's a very powerful place. Um, I've been uh, I've been three times. Uh, each time uh, incredibly powerful. Um, as you know, and as your listeners who maybe who might not have done the the Camino Frances or not gone uh, uh, not started before the Iron Cross. Um, people bring small stones, larger stones, uh, mementos, prayers 
from wherever they're coming from, from around the world. And when they get to the Iron Cross, it's, first of all, it's this massive uh, wooden pole on top of which is an Iron Cross. And the, the original Iron Cross is actually in, um, uh, in Astorga in the Pilgrim's Museum in the, the, the old palace of the, the bishop that Gaudi designed. But there's a replacement there. And at the base uh, is this massive pile of stones, hundreds of thousands of thousands of stones that people have brought from around the world. And, and they've put their hopes and their pain and their wishes and their sorrows into these stones. And when they get there, they drop the stones in the pile. And it is a collection and an accumulation of incredibly powerful feelings, passions, pain, hope, and you can't help but be affected by it. Impossible. Impossible. And I don't know. And I, I'm just thinking, how I, I, I got there by car in this yeah. effort. Yeah. What will happen when I walked all the way from St. John? Because uh, I, I, for several years, I have this in mind that the first time that I will walk the French Camino yeah. has to be starting in St. John. Yeah. I could start in, in Pamplona or in Leon or in Astorga. But yeah. I know the feeling that my first Camino, my friend, my first French Camino needs to be uh, from St. John. So I'm just trying to arrange for, for that to happen uh, anytime soon. Yeah. But then well, it can be, I, you know, I've, um, as you know, there are four main routes that come from France. Uh, and those four all end up, I mean, three of them uh, connect in Saint Jean Pied de Port, um, and the fourth one uh, connects with those three uh, just before Puente La Arena, because the the fourth one starts in Arles in the south of France, and that's where the Italians and those from Southern Europe came, and it crosses the Pyrenees at Somport, goes into Haka in Aragon not to Roncesvalles the way the other one, but it's all, and they call it the Camino Aragonese, but it's, it's ultimately just a variant of the Camino Frances because Camino Frances is the French way. And it's the way the French came and went to uh, uh, Santiago de Compostela. Um, but it, you know, Saint Jean is spectacular, Roncesvalles, uh, that climb up the mountain is definitely uh, an incredible experience. So, um, you know, look forward to, uh, to that experience. And if each day, as I did with my stones each time, is I would spend a little part of every day leading up to the Cruz de Ferro with the stone in my hand, thinking about what I was putting into the stone. Um, and, and again, hopes and fears and things I'd felt I'd done, I'd done badly to other people, things I'd not forgiven other people, you know, what I felt they had done to me. And I put all of those things into the stone. And, and I spent a little part of every day until I got to the Cruz de Ferro with that stone in my hand and then dropping it on the pile was a massive, incredibly powerful moment of liberation of spirit. I mean, every day pilgrims talk about what they can get out of their backpack to make their backpack lighter. Huh? Estamos siempre hablando de la mochila y el peso del mo de la mochila. Y es importante uh, 
dejar las cosas que no son importantes y es la misma cosa con la mochila del espíritu de cada uno. Entonces, we have extra weight that we carry, emotional baggage. And the Cruz de Ferro is a very powerful way of reducing your emotional baggage if you focus on that part of the healing that is possible through the Camino. That's, that's amazing. Um, Rocco, we are talking about a uh, really special place on the Camino. Um, what are the, the, the some more special places of your Camino? Oh, there, there's so many. I mean, uh, you, you mentioned that church on the Camino San Salvador. Uh, for me, the, the Church of Unate yeah. that's on the Aragonese just before it meets the, the Camino Frances, very powerful and uh, beautiful and important place. The Convento de San Anton just before Castro Jerif on the Camino Frances, again, a very powerful place. Um, there are special albergues in each yeah. of the, the Caminos. On the Aragonese, for me, it's Ares. It's La Casa de, Sonris, de las Sonrisas. Just wonderful people, communal dinner. On the Frances, Grañon and Tosantos. Uh, <laughs> both both uh, extraordinary. On the Norte, uh, Father Ernesto and Guemes. I mean, a very special. On the Primitivo, uh, Bodenaya. David in Bodenaya. I was there. Unbelievable. I was there. Yeah. One month ago, I was there. These, yeah, these are, uh, these are life-changing experiences. These are... Uh, Grañon, one of the things I love about Grañon, we spoke earlier, you spoke about your search for your lost credential, your pilgrim's passport. And we know that all of us collect stamps from all of the albergues. And Granion is the only albergue that I've gone in any of the Caminos of, that doesn't have a sello. Because they say, we seal it, the experience in your heart. Oh, we don't amazing. need to seal it on the credencial. And, um, and it's true. And then, um, You know, the, the, the night, the ecumenical service in Tosantos each night where they give you pieces of paper that pilgrims who had been there weeks before. And that community. now, second yeah. Community. This is for my second community. <laughs> yeah. But you will not have one for Grañon. You have to draw your own. I will. Um, Sometimes and in in Tosantos they they give you these little pieces of paper which are the prayers of pilgrims who were there and who on that night are likely to have reached Santiago and you read their prayers and we wish them well and we leave our prayers to be read by the pilgrims that come to Tosantos. This little this little guy will help me. He also always do. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you, thank you, Rocky. Uh, we're almost finishing here, but now I have one last question and then a small request. Please. Um, if you, at some point in your life, you retire and with your life, you decided, I want to live on the Camino. Where you want to live on the Camino? Or where you live on the Camino, which place? Did you already think about it? There, there are there are so many spectacular um, places, and for me, uh, walking it, I wouldn't want to be tied down to one. But there is a special place that I've often thought about. Just before you get into Villa Franca de Bierzo, on the Frances. There's a beautiful white house and every pilgrim who's ever gone there has taken a photograph of this house because it's at the top of a it's hill. It's at the top of the hill, yeah, I know, I know. Surrounded I know. by vineyards. 
Uh, and it just strikes me as an incredibly, impossibly beautiful uh, place. But much as I, I, I absolutely adore it, and I adore Villafranca de Bierzo, I think it's one of the prettiest towns in all of the Caminos. I, um, I, I, I just love so many. So I would, I would spend, I would spend my retirement walking the Caminos because it's, it's, I wouldn't want to be tied to one place because for me, uh, it is, it is um, the journey and not the destination. Yeah, At exactly. the end of the day, it's the Camino de Santiago. It's not the Camino a Santiago. Entonces, la cosa que es importante el, es de andar, es de caminar. El camino es la meta. El camino es la sí, meta. Es exacto. Uh, para terminarnos, uh, Joco, quería pedirte que nos dejases un mensaje. Lo que quieras decir, lo que te dé las ganas, un mensaje del camino para el camino. De un peregrino para los peregrinos. Por favor. Sí, seguro. Uh... Por en inglés, si quieres. Hombre, no, 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 lo quiero hacer en castellano si puedo. Vale. Um, nosotros uh, hemos vivido casi dos años ahora de COVID. Un tiempo muy malo durante uh, estos dos años. Mucha gente han fallecido, mucha gente han vivido cosas muy, muy malas. Y cada día en el camino, nosotros, los unos con los otros, nos decimos buen camino. Nos decimos ultrea, fuerza. Y para mí el camino es una vacuna. Es una vacuna por el virus de una vida vivido sin meta, sin pasión, sin amor. Y con esta vacuna... Nosotros podemos mejorar el mundo entero. Entonces, buen camino a todos los peregrinos, porque som somos todos peregrinos en la vida. Y para mí, el camino de Santiago, el camino, el camino so de debajo de de las estrellas de Compostela entonces todo el mundo eh, eh, tiene las estrellas eh, somos en el Compostela entonces somos peregrinos y yo por todos los peregrinos buen camino vamos a hacer algo para terminar en Minnesota. repite conmigo buen camino Buen camino. Bon camino. Bon camino. Bo camino. Bo camino. Gutenberg. Gutenberg. Ah, bon chemin. Bon chemin. Bon camino. <laughs> bon chemin. And good way. And good way. Uh, Rocco, it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, final part, and all of this conversation was really, really special. In this really, really special day for me, thank you, thank you so much for for allowing me to do this and to no. take part of my. Thank community. you, thank you for hosting your virtual albergue with so many <laughs> conversations because. That allows us to keep the spirit of the Camino going. So you're not only a hospitalero during the day with, uh, with the albergue, you're a hospitalero with your podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a nice day and buen camino. Obrigado.